today, we've got some new toys. Let's break them in. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name is Jake, you're watching Roman Cook. Today on the channel, we're looking at a couple accessories for the Komodo Joe that are in my top must-have list. You always want to have a rotisserie, and I had one when I had my big Joe, but what I did not have was this basket. This basket is newer. I think it came out in the last year or so, and it was one of the first things that I wanted to have. So first we're gonna open this. I will tell you, I was looking through my freezer. I was gonna do some wings because you guys know I'm a wing fanatic. I'm always looking to level up my wing game. However, I just so happened to find a Wagyu picanha and I was like, you know what? That'll work. So let's open this guy up. I'm sure I'm probably gonna need some tools. We'll throw this together real quick. And I do know that this will fit both the Big Joe and the classic Joe, you just have to put it together slightly differently. All right, so right at the gate, you can see there's a different configuration for the big Joe, the classic Joe, and the 22 inch kettle. Kind of shows you what pieces you need. Since we have the classic Joe, we need the two smallest pieces. So essentially what we do, so the screws are inside of these guys. We've got to put our handles on. Just like that, we're done. And one part is gonna sit on the rim and one's gonna go into the motor. And then this guy Got a little clamp here. There we go. Now the beautiful thing about this basket is that we've got some adjustable heights here. You can go all the way down. I think that they might have changed this now that I'm looking at it. I thought it had a dome top on it. But right there, you know, we've only got maybe a couple inch or maybe an inch there. So if you've got some steaks or something you want to do in there, you can do that. I was all confused for a second, but behind door number three was the other ones I was looking for. So if you wanted to have some wings and you need some height in your basket, you've got some options here. All right, now if you look at this, we've got Lots of room for wings or vegetables, something that you want to be able to rotate around a little bit. Or we've got flat ones for something like a steak. Now, if we look at the Joe itself, this is pretty straightforward. I had one of these before and love to do some rotisserie chicken on it. So we have our tines here. We have our motor, a ring. There we go. This guy goes here, motor goes here. And now you've got rotisserie. Let me clean all this up and we'll go get the start of the show. So I have to admit, I have a little bit of a meat problem. I have two freezers. When I see meat go on sale, it's like all I can do not to buy some. And as I mentioned, I was digging through my freezer and I found some Snake River Farms black picanha and I figured that would be the perfect way to break this guy in. <laughs> when, I, when I first started my YouTube channel I did picanha rotisserie on my gas grill and I called it Brazilian steak and uh, I used this Brazilian marinade and uh, it took a little heat. <laughs> Some people were very quick to point out that hey that is not the way you cook picanha. It should just have salt so to all those people that I pissed off way back then, this one's for you. And what we're doing here is get rid of that. See if there's any parts that are gonna come across off here. And we're gonna leave this fat cap on the back of it. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of this off the top though. Not really the knife for that, but it'll work. Just, just some silver skin here I wanna get rid of. And I think actually, now that I'm seeing this, I'm gonna take this all off. I would have bought a bigger, different knife out if I knew I was going to be doing this work. 
and it's so tough you can angle your knife up <laughs> and you won't cut through it very easily. All right, so that's trimmed up pretty good. We're actually gonna pat this a little dry. It's a little bit moist. So we'll get some paper towel and pat this guy dry here. Put all that over there. So what we wanna do here is we can see that there are grains running this way. And these are pretty big. It's a small tip, so I think, I think I can get three pieces out of this. Here we go. And you can see we've got that big fat cap, which is exactly what makes Bacanya so delicious. So we've got three pieces here. We're all going with the grain. And the reason why we go with the grain is so that we cut across the grain here on this side. Now we need some salt. It just so happens that I have some big flake salt. And we will generously coat. Some of this is just going to fall off. Put a little extra salt on the fat cap, make it nice and crispy and delicious. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean up our cutting board and let this sit on the counter for a few minutes. We'll fire up the pit. Now that we're fired up, we can put on our jotisserie, put our ring on like so. And actually we're gonna close this side down here. We'll put our ring in place the right way. And what we'll do is we'll close this up and we'll open up our vent here a little bit to get some temperatures in there. Now, the one thing I did is I filled the basket up, I fired it up in the middle. Now, traditionally you would, you would bank that back if you're doing rotisserie chicken, but I think with Bacogna, it's gonna cook relatively quickly. We're not gonna take it up to a super high temperature. So I figured I wanted to get some of that meat and the fat dripping right into the charcoal, right out of the gate. And uh, I think it'll turn out some fabulous Bacogna. Now, the one thing I'm gonna tell you this is one area where I think Komodo Joe missed the mark. This guy plugs in. This guy plugs in. Most extension cords have one outlet. I grabbed one that has two outlets on it, but it would be nice if there was a way to plug this into the connected Joe so that you only had to have one power going. Now today you guys saw I used my grow gun. I wanted to show you you can use this either way. Uh, I felt like getting out the grow gun and getting a nice even heat across the top of it because I'm going to be doing rotisserie and I want that heat right at the top rather than coming from the bottom. But we're gonna let this guy get up the temperature. And one thing I can tell you right now, I have my lid a little too tight for the jotisserie. You can see that it, do it doesn't quite seal properly. I've got a little bit of a gap. So I'm gonna get a wrench before this gets hot and just loosen off my spring a little bit so it sits here. Let me go do that now. but it turned too tight for it. Now it still holds, but now it sits on top of my jotisserie. So as I'm sitting here waiting for everything to come up to temperature, gave this a wash with some soap and water, I realized I might've made a mistake and overfilled my basket, which I was close to, luckily. I was able to take a shovel and break it down a little bit. But what I did not take into consideration is just how big or how wide this frame is. So when you put this in, you've got to leave space for this to be able to turn, right? I want it to be pretty close to my meat. That being said, we will put this guy on. Crisis is averted now. Lock that into place. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bottom one in like so. I think if they're both in the middle, these pieces might fit. Only one way to find out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get out our meter here. I'm just gonna monitor the, the biggest piece of meat here, which happens to be, well, let's see. This has got more meat for me to get into. So we're gonna go lengthwise here so I can get in the center of the meat and still have it parallel. So really my goal here is, is that I don't want them to flop around. It looks like we're in good shape. Gonna have to clean my cutting board again. <laughs> 
Now the one thing I want to put out, you can see a little bit of smoke coming here. This is a pre-production model and I found out that my gasket, there's a felt gasket underneath the oven style gasket and mine is actually turned on its side by mistake so I actually don't have a good seal on the back of it. So I'm going to have to get that fixed but I just want to let you guys know this guy goes like so. But first we put this in the, oh no, I don't have the right one. Hold on, hold on, I should have checked that before. All right, we gotta do some surgery here. <laughs> All right, so crisis averted. What I did is I put the two pointed in. I saw the two short pieces and I forgot that the one doesn't have to be pointed. It needs to be square to go into the motor. So crisis averted, <laughs> let's try this again. Put this in the motor like so. Put that in its place. Turn on the motor. And we're clearing. We're rotating. We're cooking. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to go to our meter and we will program that guy just so I've got a ballpark. And we're using number two. Take that to 130. Put that over here so we got it. Now we'll hurry up and wait. So we've hit our target temperature. It's time to pull off our Bricogna. I gotta tell you, I learned a very valuable lesson on this one. I think I saved them. We won't know until we let these rest for about 10 minutes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside and I'm going to take these out of the rack. We're gonna have some carryover. I don't need the heat from the rack carrying over even more. And we'll talk about some lessons learned. So it's been exactly 12 minutes that these guys have had to rest before I talk about some lessons learned. Let's look at last week's contest winner. Time for the Thursday drawing. I think this is actually the first Thursday that we're doing. Get this recording. As a quick reminder, the way the videos are working is Thursday to Thursday, I will do the contest drawing and on Tuesdays I'll do the contest drawing for Tuesdays. That way you have a minimum of a week to comment and uh, get entered into the drawing. This week, oh, let's hit the right button here. The hashtags were Outdoor Barbecue and Kamado Cooking. We are referencing the Serviceability 101 It Broke video on the Connected Joe. Let's see how many uh, comments we had here. 24 comments. Who we got? Cindy Paul. <laughs> they just won two weeks ago. So you never know. The other funny thing about this is a husband and wife who watch my videos are actually in Canada. I learned because I didn't send them an at bbq.com um, gift card. I sent them something out of Canada. And because they're Patreon members, I sent them 50 bucks. So now they just got 100 bucks just for being a Patreon member. They just paid for being a Patreon member for a couple of years at this point. So congratulations, you guys. The, hashtag, or the comment was, nice to see that the repairs can be done by those who are not mechanically minded. Hello. Uh, interesting video. Hashtag outdoor barbecue. Hashtag Kamado cooking. Just proof that it pays to be a Patreon member. Let's get back to the video. So unfortunately, it is the worst time of day for filming. So you're gonna have to bear with the lighting. Luckily, we've got some good lighting on here. I'm gonna take this big old piece in the middle here. Put these guys down here. Now, lessons learned. I thought it was gonna be a good idea to have an equal bed of coals underneath because I didn't think these would take that long to cook and that would just be the right setup. About eight minutes in, I came out and it was billowing smoke like crazy. And I quickly realized that I had the whole wrong idea in my head and I needed to get these guys off and rake the coals back on a slope because as that turns, they would still get lots of direct heat up close, but all the fat that was dripping down from this massive fat cap wouldn't go on a whole bunch of charcoal and flare up. Now, luckily, with this guy closed, it did not flare up because the, the air was choked down, but we had so much smoke, it was crazy. So, I'm a little bit nervous about how this is gonna taste. 
you know, you want that fat to drip down and give you some of that flavor, but I think this was like flavor times 10. So it could be very bad. That being said, I'm all about showing my mistakes on this channel. Barbecue is not perfect and I'm happy to uh, show it rather than delete a, a video. And I'm gonna take one for the team and we're gonna try this out. But knowing what I know now, baking those coals is the way to go for sure. I also put too much charcoal in. I wasn't thinking about how close the, the Series 2 is to that charcoal in my Komodo Komodo. There's a big distance there. So I tried to make up with it with charcoal and whew, let me tell you, this could be disastrous, but we will try this out. We'll cut right in the middle. Cooked darn near perfect. Good color there. The fat cap did render out nicely, I will say that. Give this a try here. Surprisingly, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm not getting any of that acrid taste I expected. Try near the end here. It is a little salt forward, I will say that. I might have went a little too aggressive on the salt for my personal taste. But it is darn tasty. I just impressed myself. Before I share my thoughts on this Picanha, let me tell you about this week's contest and a quick reminder, Thursday to Thursday, that's when we do contests, Tuesday to Tuesday. So I try and match them up so you've got a minimum of a week to participate often, or not often, sometimes. I don't get a video in on that week, so you have two weeks to participate. All you gotta do is be subscribed to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and comment below with two hashtags. The hashtags, I'll put them up here. The hashtags today are going to be Picanha and Snake River Farms. I'll put them up here so you've got them. All you gotta do is comment with those two hashtags. I will do a random drawing before the next Thursday video. And if you're chosen, you will win a $25 gift card to atbbq.com. If you're a Patreon member, even at the $5 level, I will double it and I'll make it 50 bucks to atbbq.com. Now, on this flavor, like I said, it might be a little salt forward for me. Lots of people like salt. I tend to um, not use a lot of salt in general in my cooking unless I'm doing brisket where I'm putting it on the outside of it. Not over the top, but definitely there's a lot of salt flavor. And surprisingly enough, it actually like, you can taste that whole piece has just got a whole bunch of salt in it. Those big flakes of salt help that. But the one thing I was really worried about is with all that smoke and everything going on, was it gonna ruin the flavor of this? And it absolutely did not. I lucked out. If this was, was a longer cook, I think I would definitely have that problem. But this only took about 22 minutes to cook it. So I was able to get away with it. And half of it, I was able to save it by raking up those coals. So lessons learned in here in this cook were a lot for me personally. First time I ever used a basket. And it's been three years since I used a jotisserie. So this is, channel is all about learning. I'm not going to show you perfect barbecue. Once in a while, I will knock it out of the park, no doubt. But I'm learning with you and sharing my journey as we go forward together so on that note if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed yet please do so below lots of content coming spring is here i'll see you soon